need to start recording from somewhere we'll start again once again welcome good evening uh good to see you all with us this evening at our prayer meeting uh just a reminder that nothing is going on at the church apart from our emergency food bank and uh situation in the country is still quite grim so we've plenty to pray about this evening but also we've got plenty to praise god about so we've got lots to be thankful for we're going to begin our worship of God by singing together in Psalm 24 verses 1 to 6 and then Alda will sing to it for us. The earth belongs unto the Lord and all that it contains, the world that is inhabited, and all that there remains for the Lord, that you are the God who makes it possible 
for us to worship you as a covenant community online. We bless you for that, Lord. We bless you, Lord, that you are the God of heaven and earth. The earth is the Lord's and everything in it. We thank you, Lord, that you are our creator. The heavens declare your glory, Lord. We look around us and we see so much evidence, Lord, of your power, your glory, your majesty, your grace, Lord. We thank you for that. We thank you, Lord, for your providence, how you graciously provide for us and how you sustain us and not only us, Lord, but all of creation. We thank you, Lord, that you are our covenant God, our faithful covenant-keeping God. We thank you, Lord, for the gospel, the wonderful salvation you have wrought for us in your precious Son, Jesus Christ. We bless you, Lord, and thank you for the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. We are amazed, Lord, at your grace. And we pray this evening, Lord, that we would continue to be amazed in you and in your grace, Lord. We thank you this evening for little groups like this and larger gatherings, Lord, online to the ends of the earth this evening. We thank you, Lord, for those who are calling on your name and praying to you and praising you. We praise you, Lord, and we bless you. And this evening, Lord, we look to you to help us in our worship of you, that we would do so in spirit and in truth. We do look, Lord, for your help in our current situation, in our nation, Lord. We know, Lord, there is so much that we don't understand and we are currently to be at home. And we thank you, Lord, that you know what's best for us. And we do pray for those who lead us as a nation, that you would give them wisdom, Lord, and the help. They need to make the decisions that would be ultimately blessed to the nation. We thank you for our frontline workers, Lord, our doctors, nurses, healthcare workers, paramedics, Lord, and all who work for the NHS. We do pray for them this evening that you would encourage them, support them, sustain them, Lord, and keep them safe. Lord, we see the sad news, Lord, of four doctors who have uh, died in the in the pursuance of their duty, Lord. And we thank you for them, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that they came out of retirement to to help the nation. And we pray this evening that you would be with their families to minister to them, to to bind up the broken hearted, Lord. And to bring hope in this time of desolation. Gracious God, we do pray that you would give wisdom in terms of uh, the advances made for vaccination and medication to treat this uh, illness, Lord, this virus, that you, Lord, would stop it. We realize that 573 people have died today in the UK, Father. We pray that you would be with the grieving families and the heartbroken this evening, Lord. We pray you would turn the tide, that you would stem it, Lord, and that you would turn it, and that we would see more and more recovering. We thank you, Lord, for everyone who has recovered. And we think especially, Lord, of Italy as well, who's who are suffering greatly with a huge death toll, Lord. We pray, Father, that you have mercy. Lord, we call upon your name 
and we call upon you, Lord, to help us. We need you, Lord. We don't know what to do. We ask that you would protect us, our families, our church family, and every individual connected to us as a family. And in this dark and distressing time, Lord, we pray that many would seek you and many would come into a relationship with you, that many would have faith in you at this time, Lord. We remember the elderly uh, and the young, Lord, and the vulnerable with underlying health issues that you would particularly strengthen them, guard them, and keep them, Lord. We pray that you would put a hedge of protection around them. Gracious God, may it be so that your name would be glorified in the salvation of souls and in the healing of souls this day, Lord. That we would have the medical supplies we need, the ventilators, the 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 masks, Lord, the hospital beds, and Lord, that you would be with the medical personnel to give them respite, Lord. We do thank you for Margaret, Lord, and her work with the NHS as a doctor. We pray, Father, that you would especially keep her safe in the end. Look after them, Lord, and we think of those who are working uh, in the care. Be with them, Lord, this evening. Father, we thank you for this opportunity to come before you. We remember the elderly, Susan, Nora, Katrina, Nan. We remember Ian, Lord. Be with each soul, Lord, to strengthen them and to keep them, Lord, and to build them up in their most holy faith. We ask, O oh Lord, that you would now, Father, continue with us at this time and bless, Lord, our time together. May you be glorified in it. And when all is said and done, may you have all the praise, honor, and that we could truly say it was good for us to have been together this evening. In Jesus' precious name, Lord, forgive us. Amen. Well, I want to read from Psalm 134. Psalm 134. It's a very short psalm. Psalm 134. And we'll read the whole psalm. It's a song of ascents. This was the final psalm, actually, in uh, the pilgrimage up to Jerusalem to worship the Lord. The, the songs of ascent began at 120, and this is the final one. O oh, come, uh, come, bless the Lord, all you servants of the Lord, who stand by night in the house of the Lord. Lift up your hands to the holy place and bless the Lord. May the Lord bless you from Zion, he who made heaven and earth. Amen. And we pray the Lord will bless that reading of his own precious and holy word to us. And to his own name be all honor praise and glory. Well, I want to look at these three verses for a short while tonight. And I want to look at three things regarding this psalm. And the first is the requirement for praise. The, re the reason for praise and the result of praise. And this is a psalm that praises the Lord. And we notice that it says, come bless the Lord. And actually the word that is used here is, behold, 
bless the Lord, but it's translated come. And it's actually a command, it's an imperative. The word bless means to benefit someone or something. So to praise the Lord will involve giving something. And of course that involves giving ourselves. We praise God by in faith coming to him, trusting him and depending upon him. And come bless the Lord, we're told here, the people urge the temple priests to bless the Lord. It is an imperative, all you servants of the Lord. And of course, if anyone should be praising the Lord, it's his own servants. God's servants are those who know better than anyone else. And he is worthy of our praise. And it's a great privilege to be a servant of the Lord. But privileges also bring great responsibility. Who stand by night in the house of the Lord, we're told. The people are the servants of the Lord. And it's required, commanded of them to praise the Lord. And they are those who stand by night in the house of the Lord. And of course the priests, the Levites, were those appointed especially for this service. We read in First Chronicles 9, 33. Now these, the singers, the heads of the fa of father's houses, of the Levites, were in the chambers of the temple, free from other service, for they were on duty day and night. Amazing, they were on duty in the temple day and night. Clearly, they were shipped. We read also in Revelation, therefore they are, be, they are before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple and he who sits on the throne will shelter them with his presence. And you'll notice in the heavenly temple it's the same thing. Worship is day and night. Here it is night though, these men of God faithfully served God, praising him day and night in the house of the Lord. And like I said, what a privilege it is to serve the Lord in his house. Now, we're tonight in our own houses uh, and we know that is the way the the early church worship they went from house to house and that was the church the people and what a privilege it is for us to gather and we know what it feels like to really miss that uh, many across the land know nothing of this and we as servants of the lord should never take our privileges for granted did we ever think that we wouldn't be able to come to church as a church family? So our privilege it is to bless the Lord. In the night watches, these men of God did that. While all around was sleeping, while the world sleeps, there is one place, there was one place where the places of the Lord were ascending to God because the Lord does not slumber or sleep. And there's a comfort for us in knowing that in the watches of the night, perhaps we are sometimes not able to sleep and God is waiting to hear our praise and our prayer. So the people were the servants. The requirement was for the servants of God to bless the Lord and in the place, in the house of the Lord, we are not in a church building, but we can praise the Lord. The 
that are tonight many calling themselves a church, but so often those that call themselves a church don't praise the Lord. Many that call themselves churches don't honor the Lord. In fact, rather than honoring the Lord, they deny the Lord and they dishonor him. They deny the scriptures. They deny the grace of God in salvation. And rather than praising God, they insult him and call it worship because they put their own uh, ideas and their own uh, concepts above the word of God. And what a terrible thing that is. So the place is it that they are blessing the Lord is in the house of the Lord. And they're commanded, lift up your hands in the holy place, in the sanctuary. In those days especially, and even sometimes today, people lift up their arms to praise God. We've done it. We all do it at some point. It's, of course, not necessary to raise our arms and hands in order to praise God, but the, the, the picture is very revealing. It's, it really shows an expression of what's going on, uh, embracing God, reaching out to God, waiting for God to fill our empty hands. And it shows in many ways uh, a need for God and a readiness to receive God. And this was the case. Lift up your hands in the holy place this uh, the psalmist writes and bless the Lord and it's also translated to the holy place now to lift up one's hands was a like we said a, a gesture of worship and praise and prayer and it showed also that the hands were clean at this time we're, we sang in uh, uh, Psalm 24 who shall ascend the hill of the Lord? The one whose hands are clean, his heart is pure. And lifting up hands to praise the Lord showed that the hands were clean. And it was also an expression of openness and transparency before God. And we, we sang, who shall ascend the hill of the Lord? And who shall stand in his holy place? He who has clean hands and a pure heart who does not lift up his soul to what is false and does not swear deceitfully. So, clean hands, lifting up hands is an expression of worship and faith. Now, this is the song of our saints, like we said, the last psalm in the pilgrimage to the temple to worship God. And it was to worship a holy God and to be involved in holy things. And this, there is no need for a theological qualification or to be an expert in the law, but it did mean faith. Because without faith, it's impossible to please God. We know that. Holiness in the lives of the people of God, purity of heart. Clean hands speak about a life of holiness and a pure heart is one that shall see God. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God, Jesus said. Abraham was beloved of God and Abraham believed God and it was counted to him as righteousness. Believers are beloved of God and believers are righteous by faith. It's a wonderful thing that we we don't make ourselves righteous or holy. It's faith in God that makes us righteous and holy with God's own righteousness. Now, there was meticulous teaching in the law, and it was given to instruct people, the pe the priests, about the service in the sanctuary. The priests and the Levites were the ones with the responsibility for the holy things, the things of God. 
And those who were in any way blemished were not allowed to serve in the holy place, in the sanctuary. Those with any physical imperfections were allowed to sit, but not to serve with their brothers. There were areas in which a believer could serve, but not in the holy place, not in the sanctuary. This, of course, is a type of some sinful defect in the life of a believer. It is not a physical disability that bars a person from certain types of service. A person may be unfit in some ways because of a sinful defect in their Christian walk and testimony. Not because they are incapacitated, but because of unconfessed sin has incapacitated them spiritually. The hands were lifted up to show that they were consecrated to God. A man lifting up his hands in the holy place would lift up his hands in prayer and praise. To lift up empty hands expressed an openness and availability to be filled and to be used. Or hands that were engaged in some way necessary for the service of God. And no one can properly serve or praise the Lord if hands are already full of other things. And if hands are grasping for the things of the world without reference to the things of God and Christ. And to bless the Lord, there has to be a letting go of the things that we could be grasping for things that only benefit in this life. And lifting up hands to the Lord, there must be an expectant faith of praise and prayer. You know, Pontius Pilate washed his hands and he thought he had washed himself of the guilt of his fear and inadequacy to do what was right. But friends, we need to bless the Lord with heart and soul as we embrace him who ascended the hill of Calvary, the one, the only one who truly has clean hands and a pure heart, the one whose hands were nailed to the cross for us, the one whose hands are stained with it, were stained with his blood. For he ascended the hill of Calvary. He rose and he ascended to heaven where he reigns in glory. Friends, we can truly lift up our hands this evening to that Holy One, the Son of God. And the word used for the holy place is Kodesh, meaning the holy place. Jesus is the holy place to the sanctuary the most holy place was regarded as the place where god hears prayers and from where he communicates to his people the lord jesus christ is the true holy of holies where god's glory is seen the shekinah glory was in the holy of holies and it's the shekinah glory that is seen in jesus we draw near to God through him. He is the meeting place between God and man. And it is for us to offer the sacrifice of praise and prayer from hearts filled with faith and love. The servants of God, like we said, were the priests and the Levites. But today, every believer is a priest. And Peter tells us that we are a kingdom of priests and we are to bless the Lord. The blemish of unconfessed sin will hinder fellowship until it is confessed and put away. So friends, there's the requirement for praise and the reason for praise. The, the reason given here is namely the fact that the Lord is God 
who has created the heaven and the earth. We, of course, have reasons without number to praise God. But it, this is not the only reason. But it is the reason shown us here. He's the creator of heaven and earth. He's the one who made heaven and earth. And that tells us something about the awesome power of our God. And there's a reason to praise him for his power, his majesty, and his glory. <coughs> the Lord made heaven and earth. The power of our creator is seen in the creation.